sword all day long. Somebody got a soul, soul, soul. I saw him march, I break a dawn. Somebody got a soul, soul, soul. <laughs> what was your first Mardi Gras experience? So my first year, I came out as a spa boy and I sold my own suit by myself. So after that first year, I was like, oh, this is nice. I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to actually look into the reasoning of why I'm doing it as well. Down here, we refer to this as the culture. That includes second lines, brass bands, and anything that honors the past while moving on into the future. As Wendell Pierce has said, culture is the intersection between life and death and how you deal with it. I think with Mardi Gras Indians, many of them are, in fact, of indigenous ancestry. And if that is a way of expressing the person's indigenous ancestry, I think that's a different interpretation from, say, a white person dressing up in native clothing. Right after Hurricane Katrina, I went to Big Chief Casby and saw that there was a potential for the gentrification of our culture and people coming into New Orleans and changing the dynamics of the city. And I thought that being a lawyer, I could lend a voice to the culture to be able to help it sustain itself uh, in the city of New Orleans. That's why the Mardi Gras Indians are so important. They challenge you to look into the past, to look at the indigenous cultures and the black masking Indians after them, to see the similarities to what has happened to culture and what is happening now. Some are holding on in continuing tradition. Masking began out of protest. Masking was a way for African Americans to parade in their own neighborhoods with their kings being chiefs. Next, it's going to be us running the world, and we got to make sure that it's right for the people after us and the generations to come. Young Indians of the nation, 